Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are tuning in. Thank you so much for joining me today uh, for such sweet thunder meditation program. Uh, and today I'll be giving a talk on the technique of meditating with open eyes, some of the benefits of meditating with the eyes open. So today is pretty much just a talk. I won't be guiding a meditation today. Uh, but on Thursday afternoon or uh, Wednesday night, if you're on the Pacific coast of America, there I'll be guiding uh, meditation uh, on open eye meditation. So, but here, just a discussion on how this works and why we do it. Uh, about Such Sweet Thunder, Such Sweet Thunder is a meditation uh, that I designed. It's primarily a meditation uh, using uh, the skill of mindfulness and it's uh, developing and cultivating a certain type of awareness, a type of mindfulness where we embrace the entire present moment as thoroughly as possible. I call it a radical embrace of the present moment. So a few weeks ago, I started this program uh, by meditating and talking about meditating just with the breath and the body, doing a body scan. Uh, then we added the experience of sound. We spent a couple of weeks working uh, with sound meditation. I love that. That's a really uh, a profound uh, type of meditation. Um, and then today we're entering into the next stage of the practice where we open our eyes. Now up until this point, uh, many of my students, they like to meditate with their eyes closed. And then when we get into this stage of the practice, we open our eyes and take in the visual field. Now, this is really only done when uh, it's clear that uh, the student has cultivated enough awareness and attention uh, to be able to experience the visual field and the aural field and the body and breath all at the same time. So again, we go through the breath, the body, the sounds, or sometimes we can go sounds, body and breath. It's really a personal choice. And that there may be lots of thoughts there. Uh, and that's quite normal. And so each time when we're meditating, we notice we're distracted by our thoughts. We say the word thinking to ourself, which circumvents the thinking process. You're shining the light of awareness, which is the word thinking, on the unaware state of distraction. Those two can't coexist. The distractive thought dissolves, and then we come back to the present moment. Now we do that over and over again for days, weeks, months, doesn't matter how long it takes, but eventually that consistent stream of distractive thought starts to subside. That's kind of the experience of going from a turbulent ocean to a calm pond. Now when the practitioner experiences that mind like a calm pond, type experience, then we know we're ready to enter into meditation with the eyes open. At that point, it's clear that the awareness and attention is strong enough so that we're holding all of the sounds, the silence of the present moment, all of the sensations of body and breath at the same time. We're now ready for the next stage of the practice. So why do we meditate with the eyes open? Well, one of the first benefits that becomes really clear from open eye meditation is that it's easier to sort of bring the skills that we're cultivating in meditation to everyday life. When you think about it, that's actually, you know, makes, you know, logical good sense because when we're out in everyday life, uh, when we're faced with a confrontation or an emotionally charged situation, uh, we're not going to really have time to, to, you know, close our eyes and, you know, contemplate or close our eyes and get into the present moment and then respond. 
you're going to be responding right away in those situations. So by meditating with the eyes open, it's really a way of allowing what we cultivate in meditation, the skills that we cultivate in meditation, to be much more accessible in everyday life. We can our life with our eyes open. So not creating that bridge to cross, if you will, uh, from you know meditating, if you're in a chair or in a cushion, you have your eyes closed, and then everyday life, your eyes are open, it's a little bit more of a distance to cross from when you're on the cushion to when you're in your everyday life experience. So that's one of the great benefits of meditating with the eyes open. Another benefit is that you'll notice your awareness getting much, much larger. Now, going through, through the practice again from the beginning, we start with the breath, mindfulness of the breath. So awareness is, you know, about that big. That's, you know, a little bit larger than normal, maybe normal awareness before we start meditating. It's usually awareness is right here behind the eyes, looking out at the world over there, and the body just kind of dangles below us, right? So we started a meditation, now we're holding the entire breath at the same time. Now awareness is stable and a little bit large, like maybe the size of a loaf of bread, just metaphorically speaking. Then we do the body scanning. We add the experience of the body. Now awareness is a bit larger. Then we add the experience of sound. Now awareness is quite a bit larger. And here uh, is where I talked about uh, two weeks ago about the benefit of uh, mindfulness practice as a pain management technique. Because we're allowing awareness to get expansive and expansive. The things, that the pains, the aches, uh, emotional or physical, that would have really uh, been all-encompassing, uh, they're still there, but now our awareness is much larger, so we can hold them uh, without falling into uh, the need to obsess about them. It's quite profound. So that, actually, that pain management technique, uh, pretty much, well, it's hard to quantify, but doubles, if you will when you meditate with the eyes open because the visual field is huge, right? There's so much in front of your eyes in any given moment. And I, I think that we often, uh, no pun intended, overlook that, right? How huge the visual field is, how much sensory experience, it's so rich, this tapestry of color, shadow, light, uh, space. It's just, uh, it's enormous, it's vast. Particularly if you're outside uh, where you have an, a clear uh, view of the skyline, maybe looking at a sunset over the beach or something like that. I mean, that's the sky is enormous, right? Holding all of the stars and the planets and the clouds and the ocean and the planet Earth and all of the people on the Earth held in that sky. So now, when we're meditating with the eyes open, our awareness gets to be that size. So again, coming back to the idea of mindfulness practice as a pain management technique, we're holding the breath, we're holding the body, we're holding the sounds and the silence, and then we open our eyes, we practice with eyes open for quite some time, it can take some time to, for that to stabilize, but when it does stabilize, now the toothache that arises or the sore throat or the headache, uh, it actually seems really, really quite small uh, because our awareness has become so much larger. Prior to meditation, that toothache or that sore throat or the heartache uh, would have taken up all of our awareness, our, all of our thoughts uh, would be focused around that discomfort. So gradually expanding awareness larger and larger and larger and larger, the pain seems like it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. It's actually the same size. We're not using uh, meditation to repress anything. We honor the present moment, including the discomforts. But because our awareness has become so much larger, the discomforts seem quite small. 
So one of the great benefits of uh, open eye meditation is that process of allowing discomforts uh, to be much, much more manageable. So when we start meditating with the eyes open, uh, well, the first thing, if you've never meditated with the eyes open, or if you've been meditating uh, with your eyes closed, then you open your eyes, uh, you'll notice it is quite a bit more challenging uh, for that same reason that the uh, visual field is so much larger. It will take a much greater sense of awareness and attention to hold all of the sensory experience within the visual field, all of the sensory experience within the aural field, the sounds, the silence, all of the body and breath. To hold all of that together in the present moment uh, will, I mean, I say this is a gross generalization, but for most people, it requires a bit of practice. It can be quite a bit of practice. And so when we enter into this stage of the practice, you notice the mind will be more turbulent, more turbulent. It'll be going from that calm pond experience to that turbulent ocean again. So there'll be thought after thought, and you just stay in the moment, hearing the sounds, feeling the breath, eyes are open in front of you, thought takes you away. Oh, that was a really great lunch I had yesterday, pad thai. Oh, my brother really likes pad thai. I should call my brother. I wonder what my brother's doing. This. Oh, yeah, he's got those really nice dogs. They were friendly dogs. Oh, I'm thinking. Just thinking. That thought will go. Coming back to the present moment, and then another thought will come right up again. Wow, this meditation is really kind of challenging. I, I really should have gone to the toilet before I started. I wonder how much longer this is going to... Thinking. That thought will go. Each time you do that process, you're getting stronger in your awareness and attention. You're lifting the awareness barbell. I know I keep mentioning this time and time again throughout the episodes because it is so important to recognize that that is the method of meditation. Distraction, return. Distraction, return. Equally important is to remember to congratulate yourself every turn. That's a success. And I mention this because so often we get caught up in berating ourselves when we get distracted. Oh, I can't do this. My, you know, it's, I don't have enough awareness. I don't have enough attention. I can't stay in the present moment. My, those are all more thoughts, by the way. So you say thinking again, coming back to the present moment. Then congratulate yourself for the return. Yes, I made it back to the present moment. I can do this. And, and so the reason for that congratulatory move is that is positive reinforcement. See, if you're berating yourself every time you get distracted, you'll be berating yourself upon the return, right? So if you think about it, so the mind is distracted by thought, Oh, I, you know, I don't know if I can do this. Oh, yeah, I can do this. This will be good. I can do this. Right, I'm doing this now, and I'm thinking. Then if you then start to berate yourself upon that return, your body, your mind, your heart remembers the return with a negative emotion. You're putting a negative charge on the process of returning to the present moment. So by doing that, you're actually training your mind to stay distracted. The exact opposite of our intention behind mindfulness meditation. Our intention here is to be in a radical embrace of the present moment. So again, each time you get distracted, say, thinking, return, yes, I can do this. Something small, just a, a quick congratulations to yourself. Uh, to give that positive reinforcement to the body, mind, and heart each time you return, the mind will remember that. It will remember that that's a positive feeling coming back to the present moment. Uh, so we can use that to our advantage. Another one of the great benefits of open eye meditation is we start to learn not to label and map out the visual field. 
we're all doing this almost all the time anyway, right? If you've never done open eye meditation before, you might not even recognize that we're doing it. You go into, let's say, a theater, and all of a sudden you're mapping out the theater, um, empty chair, full of occupied chair, occupied chair, empty chair, uh, blue shirt, uh, yellow shirt, red hat, sunglasses, uh, strange person, handsome person, whatever it is, we start mapping out the territory. Uh, as soon as we walk into a room, especially if it's a room that we've never been in before, or a garden, or any type of setting uh, that we're in, we subconsciously map it out with our thoughts. So if you think about that, no, again, no pun intended, if you contemplate that process, we're actually covering our world with words. And so just like the word water can't quench your thirst, or the word oak can't tell you the majesty and life force within a tree, just like that, we start to deaden the experience of our environment with our labeling mind. It was the great Sufi poet Rumi who once said, silence is the language of God, everything else is a poor translation. And so with open eye meditation practice, we start to develop the skill to be able to speak that silent language that Rumi was referring to. We start to be able to experience the world the way nature intended it to be experienced before and prior to the map-making logical mind. So in this meditation, we open our eyes and we allow the visual field just to be there in front of us. And we don't label anything, computer, handsome man talking, <laughs> it's phone, books, window, gecko. We don't label anything. We just allow the visual field to be there as another experience in our awareness, free from the labeling mind, free from the map-making mind. Now, this is challenging. So go slow, always, always, always practicing meditation and mindfulness with a healthy dose of self-compassion. Be patient with the process. Recognizing that when you focus on an object in the visual field or when you label an object, recognize that that is just a, a thinking process. That's just a distraction. Say that's just thinking, let that go. And come back to just experiencing the present moment free from the thoughts, free from the labeling mind. Now you can also do that with the sounds too. You don't have to assign each sound a source. So hearing the crickets, for example, Thailand's, this soundscape here is so rich with geckos and crickets and cicadas and birds. But allowing your awareness just to hear the sounds as sounds, free from the objectification behind those sounds. And so here we're doing the same thing with the visual field, just noticing the visual field as it hangs there in front of our eyes like a rich tapestry, a play of shadow, color, light, and space. Now I mentioned the space, and that is actually an equally important aspect of the visual field, the empty space. When you look at the space itself, when you're meditating with the visual field, notice the emptiness between yourself and the computer or the phone, between yourself and any objects in the room. It's actually the emptiness which gives, gives the room that you're in right now its value. Without the emptiness, the room wouldn't be able to hold anything, right? It's the same with a cup or a glass. If the glass wasn't empty, it, it no longer has the value of a glass. It has the value of a vessel, carry whatever it's carrying, 
but it's no longer valuable as a cup, as a glass, because it's full. And so noticing and appreciating the emptiness quality in the present moment experience. There's always a factor of emptiness in every present moment. Uh, and we often overlook that because we're so hypnotized by the objects in the room. We're so hypnotized by the colors, uh, particularly if any object has an emotional component to it, if it was a gift or it belonged to a family member that recently deceased, uh, uh, those objects have that weight to them and they take us right out of the experience of emptiness and into the experience of the material world. It's the same thing in the sense of hearing. We're so hypnotized by the sounds of the present moment that we lose the experience of silence. There's always a component of silence in every moment, but we're so hypnotized by, by the cascading sounds that move through our awareness that we forget, we lose touch with that silent space. And in fact, it's actually the same thing in our mind too. There's always a component of silence within the mind, but we're so hypnotized by our thinking process that we lose touch with the silent space in the mind. And meditation is actually helping us to reclaim uh, that stillness that's always in the mind, but it's covered up by our thinking. And so by observing, experiencing the emptiness in the visual field, it almost serves as a reminder uh, to listen to the stillness within the mind, to listen to the stillness within the sense of hearing. So a couple of ways of bringing this practice in as a, a couple of practical uh, techniques. Uh, there is a technique that I like to call framing uh, so this is one way of practicing uh, visual field meditation uh, without using the entire scope, uh, the peripheral all the way to the middle of the vision, without using all of that at first. Uh, start small. Uh, make it a little bit easier. So maybe use the computer screen. Uh, put a nice picture of a sunset there. And then set your gaze right in the middle of the screen, right in the middle of the photo there. And then allow the gaze to rest and allow the, the gaze or the, or the eyes to relax and slowly taking in the entire picture within the screen. You might be able to do that while, now while you're listening to me talk. Uh, just put your eyes right in the middle of the screen. Maybe that's on my nose. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and then uh, allow the gaze to soften and expand out, uh, seeing my shirt. Uh, my whole face, sorry about that, uh, the wall behind me, the, the, the artwork behind me, the light perhaps, and so forth, so that you take in the whole screen all at the same time as one experience. Now, again, you'll notice awareness wanting to focus on different parts of the screen, uh, maybe focusing on the artwork behind me or the ceiling fan in the other room that you can see there rotating. Uh, so your eye gets um, captivated by something within that frame. If and when that happens, note that as just thinking. Let that go. Allow the gaze to soften again. Don't push against whatever you focused on, but expand out from the point of focus to include everything within the screen. That way we're not repressing anything. So expanding out from the point of focus to include everything within that framework. And that's a, a nice way of practicing open eye meditation without using the whole visual field. Uh, because now you've taken a bite-sized chunk and you're just working with that. Now if that starts to settle, then you can come back, add the sounds, add the body and the breath. So then you're really experiencing the present moment but you're not using the entire visual field because that, again, that requires uh, quite a lot of awareness and attention to hold the whole spectrum in front of your eyes. <clears throat> so that can be, oh, pardon me. <clears throat> so that can be, 
simple water. So that can be one way of really grounding the experience of the visual field in the practice. Another way which I love is taking nature walks. I think this is a great way of practicing um, nature, uh, uh, open eye meditation rather. You go out into the woods or into the forest or into a garden and just be in the experience of seeing whatever is there. Look at a tree and you just be with the tree. Don't label it oak or redwood or pine. Don't label it uh, big or tall or small or short. Don't label it anything at all. Just be with the experience of the tree. And you'll start to see the tree in, in a different way. Guarantee that you will start to notice the life force within that tree. If you're doing this in a garden, just sit and be with the flowers. Don't label the flowers rose or red or orchid or yellow or blue. Now labeling probably will arise, especially if you're just doing this for the first time. Thoughts will come up. Oh, that's a blue orchid. Oh, my grandmother had blue orchids. I wonder what my grandmother's doing. I, she's got that really strange cat. I wonder why she has that. Oh, I'm thinking. And you let those thoughts go. Come back to the experience of the flowers themselves and just be there. And see, see how you, your relationship to that object will change like that. So just to be in the experience of seeing. Great way of practicing not labeling your experience uh, with nature. I, I like to do this at the ocean too. Uh, going out to the beach or, or if you're on a boat and just looking out at the ocean. Now if you do that you'll notice your eyes want to focus on different things, a seagull, a cloud, a bird, a dolphin, a, a particular wave. You'll notice awareness then collapsing down. So if that happens and if this happens in the garden too, notice how your awareness gets smaller when you're focused on something. And then when you say, oh, I'm focused, I'm thinking, let that go, you'll notice awareness gets much larger when you expand back out to see and experience the entire visual field. So that's a couple of ways of working with the visual field there. Uh, framing practice, also working in nature, uh, can be really, um, really a beautiful way of bringing the visual field uh, to life in a very pragmatic, useful way. Learning to experience the world free from our labeling mind, free from the map-making mind. Because uh, then we are experiencing the world uh, the way it was intended to be experienced, by nature. And so, again, one of the benefits of this is that we can see our projections we start to be able to see the world as it, as it arises in nature. That's here in this hand. And then we see our opinions, our definitions, our likes and dislikes, our preferences and prejudices in this hand. And they arise together, just like they normally for a practice like this. But after six months or a year of practice, you start to notice the difference between the world as it exists, as it arises, and your opinions about the world. And you notice that they're different, like that. Uh, so then we stop getting so caught up in uh, needing the world to be uh, the way we think it should be. And we can rest in the way the world arises, like that. Okay. I think that's all I'm going to say about that. So there, that's a lot uh, for you to digest, to contemplate, to think about. Uh, when I come back on Thursday, I will be guiding uh, this meditation practice. So we'll go into the breath, the body, the sounds, and the silence, and then we'll add the visual field, practicing uh, that experience of not labeling anything and just allowing the visual field to arise in our awareness like that, seeing the world as it is 
rather than how we want it to be. It's a beautiful practice, so I hope you'll join me for that. That's on Thursday, uh, same time, uh, 1 o'clock p.m. in Thailand. I think that's 11 p.m. Pacific Coast time, uh, which will be Wednesday night. Any questions or comments, please do send them along uh, through Messenger, or you can put a comment underneath the video. Happy to get those questions, happy to respond. Uh, I'll be doing a Q&A session at some point uh, to respond to that. Also, uh, if you're interested in previous videos uh, that I've done, please do go visit my website, www.suchsweetthunder.org. And uh, I have lots of podcasts on there as well. If you're, if you're really uh, more into audio than video, I'm uh, trying to uh, enrich my podcast library. I think I have about 12 up there now, but uh, steady, steady, increasing every day uh, a podcast. I pretty much every day. Okay, I've rambled enough. Uh, be safe wherever you are, particularly in America. Oh my goodness, you guys, it's a mess. Uh, so please do wear your masks, uh, stay safe, do your social distancing if you have to go out at all, uh, and uh, please uh, do whatever you can do to flatten that curve. Um, yeah, uh, Lots of love and light to you all and to the entire world. I'll see you on Thursday.